Hello viewers, welcome to AP's Postgraduate Ophthalmology Pearls. Today we shall discuss the schematic eye. The refraction of light by the eye is a complex process because there are more than one refractive surfaces. The distance between the refractive surfaces that is the cornea and the lens has to be considered. Light has to pass through media with varying refractive indices and finally the lens by itself has different refractive indices and curvatures in its different layers. The construction of this process by ray diagrams is not possible with the actual dynamics in place. Hence, in order to study image formation by the eye, a model that allows the diagrammatic representation using the curvatures, indices of refraction and calculated distances exists. This is referred to as the schematic eye. So, a schematic eye is a model that represents the basic optical features of the real eye. In order to study the schematic eye, it is necessary to understand the concept of the cardinal points of an optic system and we will discuss these cardinal points with respect to refraction of spherical lenses. The cardinal points that we need to understand are principal focus, principal points and the nodal points. A spherical lens has one or both surfaces curved in the form of a sphere. For convenience, we will discuss all optical parameters with respect to a biconvex lens. The center of the sphere of which the lens forms a part is called the center of curvature. Radius of the sphere is called the radius of curvature. The total virgins or refracting power of a spherical lens depends on the virgins power of each surface and the thickness of the lens. For a thin lens, the power of the lens is the algebraic sum of the powers of its constituent surfaces. We shall first consider refraction in a thin lens. The optical center of a lens is that point in the lens which causes all rays that pass through it to be undeviated. It need not correspond to the geometric center of the lens. A central ray of light striking the lens transversely does not get refracted but passes through undeviated. The line corresponding to this central ray is called the principal axis of the lens. Refraction at the lens occurs at both surfaces of the lens. For purposes of convenience, we can consider the refraction to occur at the principal plane. This represents refraction at both surfaces of the lens. The point where the principal plane intersects the principal axis is called the principal point. In a thin lens, the principal point and the nodal point coincide with each other. Rays of light passing through the nodal point are undeviated. To understand further, you must understand that in ray diagrams, the ray of light from the object are always shown as coming from the left and striking the lens. Next we shall see what the principal focus is. It is the point at which parallel rays of light all converge after refraction. Similarly, rays passing through the principal focus become parallel after refraction. Each lens has two principal foci. The first principal focus is the point of origin of rays which, after refraction by the lens, are parallel to the principal axis. The distance from the principal point to the first principal focus is the first focal length. Instant light parallel to the principal axis is converged to the second principal focus whose distance from the principal point is called the second focal length. Lenses are designated by their second focal length. Thus, convex or converging lenses are sometimes called plus lenses and are marked with a plus. If the medium on either side of the lens is the same, example air, then the first and second focal lengths are equal. However, if the second medium differs from the first, then F1 will not be equal to F2. Knowing the focal length helps us to calculate the power of the lens. The reciprocal of the second focal length in meters gives us the power of the lens in diopters. So for example, the power of a convex lens of focal length 25 cm is 1 by 25. Since we need to use the value in meters, this is 1 by 0.25, that is 4 diopters. Similarly, for a focal length of 10 cm, power is 1 by 0.1, that is 10 diopters. So, a lens with a shorter focal length has a higher power and vice versa. Now, coming to thick lens optics, there is a distance between the two refracting surfaces that cannot be ignored. 
in a thick lens refraction can be considered to occur at two principal planes instead of one like in a thin lens which intersect the principal axis at the two principal points rays entering the lens parallel to it pass through the second principal focus and rays passing through the first principal focus prior to striking the lens emerge parallel after refraction the distance between the second principal point and the second principal focus is the second focal length and the distance between the first principal point and the first principal focus is the first focal length of the system there are two nodal points in a thick lens such that a ray pass that passes through the first nodal point leaves the lens as if from the second nodal point but in the same direction and parallel to it the nodal points are distinct from the principal points when the medium on both sides of the lens is different nodal points are particularly useful for determining image size this paradigm can be applied to any number of lenses of any thickness in any medium Now that we have understood the concept of cardinal points we can study the schematic eye numerous people have devised their own interpretations of the ideal schematic eye but the detailed schematic eye model developed by Alvar Gullstrand most closely approximates the human eye Alvar Gullstrand was a Swedish ophthalmologist and was the only ophthalmologist to win the Nobel prize for his work in ophthalmology In 1911, Alvar Gullstrand was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine for his work on the optics of the eye. He also invented that instrument without which no ophthalmologist can survive today, the sitter. The schematic eye developed by Gullstrand is very detailed and gives the measurements for the positions and refractive indices of the refractive surfaces of the eye and various cardinal points. All the measurements are given for both the non-accommodated and the fully accommodated eye. So, here are the values for the refractive indices of the various refracting surfaces of the eye as determined by Gullstrand. The difference in refractive index of the medium on both sides of a refracting surface determines the degree of refraction apart from the curvature. The refractive index of air is 1 and that of the cornea is 1.376. The difference in refractive index between the cornea and the air is the greatest that is why maximum refraction occurs at the cornea an example demonstrating the importance of the air cornea interface can be seen when a swimmer opens his eyes under water since the difference in the refractive indices of both these is only 0.4 the effectiveness of the refraction at the cornea reduces this situation can be eliminated by the swimmer keeping air in front of the cornea by wearing goggles the refractive index of the aqueous and vitreous is the same that is 1.336 the effect of the posterior surface of the cornea as a refracting surface is very small as the difference in refractive index between the corneal stroma and the aqueous is not large so the major refracting surfaces of the eye are the anterior surface of the cornea cornea and the two surfaces of the lens Here are the positions of the various refractive surfaces relative to the position of the anterior surface of the cornea. The anterior surface of the lens is 3.6 mm behind the cornea. Here are the values of the radii of curvature of the various surfaces. The radius of curvature of the anterior surface of cornea is 7.7 mm. In terms of refracting power, that of the cornea is the greatest. The effective power of the cornea is 43 diopters as the posterior surface of the cornea reduces the effective power. Also, note the significant increase in the lens power during accommodation, especially the anterior lens surface. Gullstrand has also given the cardinal points and parameters treating the eye as a whole as a single refracting surface of power equal to that of the entire eye. Note that the total refracting power of the eye is 58.64 diopters. Notice that the two nodal points straddle the posterior pole of the lens. The second focal point is 24 mm from the anterior corneal surface that is in the position of the retina. This schematic eye by Gullstrand is termed Gullstrand's exact eye. Although very useful, this model is cumbersome for certain clinical calculations and is often simplified further. If you notice, the two principal points and the two nodal points are situated very close to one another. So the two principal points could be substituted by a single point in between the two with no loss of detail. 
same situation with the two nodal points thus the optical system could be reduced to a model with a single equivalent refracting surface at the cornea with a single equivalent refractive index listing came out with such a reduced schematic eye or reduced eye which was then further simplified by donders gulstrand also came out with a simpler model of his eye termed gulstrand's simplified eye the one with gulstrand's data is most commonly followed so the reduced eye is an ideal spherical surface the radius of curvature of which is 5.73 mm and which separates two media of refractive indices 1 and 1.336 the principal point lies 1.35 mm behind the anterior surface of the cornea that is in the anterior chamber the nodal point is 7.08 mm behind the anterior corneal surface that is in the posterior part of the lens its first principal focus lies 15.7 mm in front of cornea and its posterior focal point lies 24.13 mm behind the anterior surface of the cornea that is in a normal eye upon the retina its power is plus 58.6 diopters Using this reduced schematic eye we can construct the retinal image by drawing straight lines through the extremity of the object passing through the nodal point till they reach the retina we know that rays passing through the nodal point are undeviated the image is real inverted and diminished it is reinverted psychologically in the brain with the geometric principle of similar triangles the retinal image size of an object such as a snellen letter may be calculated with the following formula another way to determine retinal image size is by constructing an image by representing the reduced eye by two parallel lines one for the principal plane and the other for the retina the angle subtended by the object at the nodal point of the eye theta is the visual angle it is obvious from the figure that tan theta is equal to height of the retinal image divided by the first focal length thus the retinal image is equal to tan theta into first focal length thus the retinal image size depends on the visual angle so just to test your memory uh, you can ponder on the answer which of the following statements is false rays passing through nodal point of any eye pass through undeviated the nodal point of a reduced eye lies 17 mm in front of the retina the second focal length of a schematic eye lies on the retina and nodal point is situated in the anterior cortex of the lens if you like what you saw subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from ap's ophthalmology pearls you may watch my other videos by clicking on the thumbnails please leave a note in the comment section if you wish for any particular topic to be covered in future look forward to weekly updates thank you for watching